Well, let's start, we're talking about I am the light of the world. Recently, my family and I watched this fantastic movie called Young Woman in the Sea. And it was uh, starring Daisy Ridley based on a true story about this woman named Gertrude Ederly who lived almost 100 years ago, who was a swimmer. And at, at this time, there weren't really uh, sports for women. And so there weren't really women in the Olympics, but Gertie, as she was, or Trudy, I think is what, what her nickname was, as she was called, decided to push and became an Olympic swimmer. But that wasn't enough for her. She wanted to actually be one of the first women to ever swim across the English Channel from France to England. And if you know anything about that swim, it's 20.5 miles long. It is treacherous. You can get lost along the way. You have to have a boat that goes with you. And so in the movie, she actually attempts the swim and doesn't make it. Doesn't make it. But then she tries again. She doesn't want to give up. She tries again. And so she takes off from France, 7.08 in the morning, into the water, and begins swimming, churning her arms, kicking her legs. And then towards the end of the swim, there's this place near the landing place in England called the Shallows. And at the end of the day, the boat cannot follow the swimmer into the shallows because the boat might run aground. So the swimmer has to complete this last part of the 20 and a half miles by themselves. And of course in the movie, maybe it's a little overly dramatized, but I'm gonna pretend that's what actually happened. In the, in the movie, the boat separates from Trudy and she has to go the rest of the way by herself. And there's this moment where she stops to take a rest. And in just kind of resting there, as she's in the dark, as she's bobbing, she gets turned around and she can't figure out which way to go. She can't see anything. She doesn't know which direction to turn. She can't figure out where she was just 30 seconds ago. And you all of a sudden you lose hope for her. She takes off her goggles and she just drops them in the ocean because she thinks this is the end. And she goes underwater trying to decide like, what do I do? Well, when she comes up in the distance in the background, her friends are waiting at the cliffs of Dover and they know that she might have a hard time finding, uh, finding land. And so along the cliffs, every 20 yards, they have lit these massive bonfires for her to see. In the movie, all of a sudden you get this like light of hope. But the problem is when she comes up out of the water, the cliffs are that way and the fires are that way and she's looking back at France, but she doesn't realize that. And you're almost yelling at the TV, there's light that way, turn around, there's hope. And she doesn't for like 30 seconds and finally she turns around and sees the fire in the distance, the light, and she swims towards it. And you just are elated as she gets to the shore and there's a crowd gathered for her. And as she comes out of the water, her whole body's like illuminated by the light of the fire. I, I think a lot about that when I think about us living in this broken, dark world. Because often I think we feel like we're bobbing up and down, not sure which direction to go. We're surrounded by darkness, the darkness of our own sin, the darkness of the brokenness of the world. And, and we feel like there's no hope. But there is hope, and that hope is Jesus. And he says, I am the light of the world. Jesus is the light that shows us the way. He's the one that brings salvation. He's the one that shines in the, in the darkness. In John 8, 12, Jesus speaks to them again and says, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. When Jesus says that he's the light, what he means is that, is that he's salvation. Just as Trudy was looking for salvation, where, where do I go? Jesus is salvation. He's saying, I am in the only hope. It reminds me of the prophecy from Isaiah chapter nine. We, we, quote, this prophet, we quote this prophecy every Christmas where we say, and the government will be on his shoulders, wonderful counselor, mighty God. But the verse that really leads into that is from verse two, where it says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. A great light is shown upon them. 
The light is Jesus, and Jesus is the greatest hope of the world. He's your greatest hope. So a couple questions to think about. If Jesus says, I am the light of the world, he's saying that salvation through him is your greatest hope and your only hope. It's worth asking the question, do you have your greatest hope in something else? Like, are you kind of looking off in the distance and placing all your hope in getting to a new stable stage of life? Looking ahead and saying, my life will only work if I find that special someone or if I can get rid of these problems. Friends, if you make those things your ultimate hope, you will be sadly disappointed. Jesus is saying that he is the greatest hope. And if you have him, you have the light of the world. Jesus came from the light of heaven and entered into the darkness of this world, fully God, yet fully man. He enters into the darkness of a sin-stained world, yet he remains without sin. He fully obeys God, perfectly loves his neighbor, and then he dies on the cross for you and me. When he dies, darkness covers the land. He sheds his blood to pay the penalty and break the power of sin. He lives the life we should have lived, died the death and darkness we deserve to die so that through his death and resurrection, we might live. That's your greatest hope. That's the light. Do you remember that? When your heart gets pulled to other hopes, it's not bad to have other hopes, but if you make, the, if you make those things your ultimate hope, they will ultimately let you down. Jesus says to us that anyone who follows him will never walk in darkness, but will have what? The light of life. The light of life. That, that's both a promise and a call. It's a promise in, in the sense that if you have Jesus, you have the light of life. You might not feel that way at times. The world's a dark place. But what Jesus says is true. You have life's greatest question figured out if you know him. He's the light. He is the light of life. But it's also a call. It's also a call for you to walk in the light, not to walk in darkness, but to walk with him, to come out of the darkness. Throughout the book of John, Jesus uses that imagery of light over and over again. And he uses it very strongly around the Bible's famous ver most famous verse, John 3.16. He says this, For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. We know that part, right? For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Anyone who believes in him is not condemned, but anyone who does believe is already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. Here's the light. This is the judgment. The light, Jesus, has come into the world. And people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and avoids it so that his deeds may not be exposed. But anyone who lives by the truth comes to the light so that his works may be shown, may be shown to be accomplished by God. When you go into a dark room that you have not cleaned in a while and you flip on all the lights, it is exposed. The dust balls in the corner, the cobwebs in the ceiling, but it's when you turn on the light that you're both disgusted, but you can actually do something about it. Jesus is saying that for those who come to him, who bring their life openly to him, who are willing to let him shine the light of his salvation into their life and heart, they're the ones who are exposed where they are, but they're the ones who can be changed. So the question for us is, do we love darkness rather than light? Are we keeping the lights off so we can hide doing our things our own way? Or are we coming to the light? Though we are exposed when he shines his light, he will transform us. He's a light to us, but also not just us, the light of the whole world.